Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Health officials say the new coronavirus variant Omicron has now become dominant in South Africa and is driving a sharp increase in new infections. Some 8,500 new COVID infections were registered in the latest daily figures. That is almost double the 4,300 cases confirmed the previous day. Omicron has now been detected in at least 24 countries around the world, according to the World Health Organization. South Africa was the first country to detect the highly mutated new variant. Russian Foreign Secretary Sergei Lavrov has warned that Europe could be returning to what he called the nightmare of military confrontation. At a European security conference in Sweden, Mr. Lavrov floated the idea of a new European security pact to try to stop NATO from expanding further east. The United States remains unwavering in our support for Ukraine's territorial integrity. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned of serious consequences if Russia sought conflict with Ukraine. Diplomats are meeting in Stockholm for a summit at a time of increased tensions between Russia and Ukraine as the former boosts its military presence on the border. Austrian Conservative leader Sebastian Kurz, who resigned as Chancellor in October after he was placed under investigation on suspicion of corruption, says he is quitting politics. Die heutige Entscheidung, und das können Sie sich wahrscheinlich vorstellen, the surprise move now leaves a power vacuum in his party. Kurtz has been the dominant figure of his People's Party and Austrian political life since 2017 when he became party leader and then chancellor. He told a news conference he was leaving politics altogether. Germany has announced a new nationwide lockdown for anyone who isn't vaccinated. Angela Merkel and Olaf Scholz, who will replace her as chancellor next week, met with regional leaders to agree on the measures on Thursday morning. Under a draft of the new measures, leaked to the German press, the unvaccinated will be barred from restaurants, pubs, cinemas, gyms, cultural events and non-essential shops. They will also be subject to strict contact restrictions, allowing a maximum of two households to meet. The Women's Tennis Association has announced the immediate suspension of all tournaments in China amid concern for Chinese tennis player Peng Shui. Peng disappeared from public view for three weeks after accusing a top Chinese official of sexual assault. WTA chief Steve Simons said he had serious doubts that Peng was free, safe and not subject to intimidation. In good conscience, he said, I don't see how I can ask our athletes to compete there. In response, China said it opposes the politicization of sports. Heavy rains that triggered floods and landslides in central Vietnam have left at least 18 people missing. Many of those are feared to have died, while many houses have been destroyed and roads damaged. Beach towns Phu Yen, Binh Dinh and Vietnam's main coffee growing province were all the hardest hit. The floods have inundated 780 hectares of rice fields, although no damage has been reported so far to coffee farms. Vietnam is prone to storms and flooding. Natural disasters killed 378 people there last year. The Duchess of Sussex has won the latest stage in her legal fight against the publisher of the British newspaper The Mail on Sunday. The Court of Appeal rejected Associated Newspapers' attempts to have a trial over its publication of extracts from Meghan's letter to her father. Her lawyers had said her letter to Thomas Markle in August 2018 was deeply personal and self-evidently was intended to be kept private. In response to the verdict, Meghan wrote, This is a victory not just for me, but for anyone who has ever felt scared to stand up for what is right. The Pope has arrived in Cyprus with a message of compassion for the thousands of migrants who have fled to the East Mediterranean island. It is the first leg of his five-day journey, which will see him visit Cyprus and Greece, two countries at the front line of migratory routes for people fleeing their countries for Europe. It is his 35th apostolic journey since he became pontiff. And finally, crowds return to New York City's Midtown Manhattan for the 89th annual lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Officially kicking off the holiday season, the two-hour ceremony contained a series of star-studded performances. The night's highlights came when more than 50,000 multicolored LED lights were switched on, bringing the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree to life. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to Channel Studios in Lagos.